Hey everyone, I'm Kayleen Yoder and I'm so excited for this Monday Night Live call as we are focusing on the topic of recruiting. Um, and we have three amazing rock stars joining us tonight and I'm excited to introduce them. But before I do that, Christina did an amazing call last week and she quoted this quote and it's going to be so relatable to this topic of recruiting. And it says, sales is simply the transfer of belief. Well, guys, that is recruiting. <laughs> recruiting is transferring belief that people need what we have in these products and that these products are for them, right? And so what you're going to hear from these ladies tonight is full on belief because as I looked at the top recruiters list for last month, these ladies were at the top. And I'm excited for you all to hear from them. So without further ado, I want to introduce our mother-daughter duo. We have Rhonda and Emily. So you ladies, would you like to unmute and say hello and introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what has contributed to your strong influence and your strong recruiting last month? I guess I'll go ahead if that's okay. Um, well, um, I'm a nurse and I've been a nurse now, did oncology for 18 years um, in gastroenterology now, been 10. So this is kind of like the perfect place for me, talking about gut health. Um, and I've met a lot of people as I've worked in three different offices in three different counties, given and mixed and chemo. And now I have people coming in um, they're always talking about their gut. So I have to be careful since I do work in the doctor's office. I kind of, and a lot of them I know from home. Um, so I make the connection and being a nurse all these years, we're never at a loss for words normally. So it's just easy. I never meet a stranger. So I just talk to them like they're my family. So and I can tell y'all, I'm very much out of my comfort zone right now. So I'm very nervous. So y'all just overlook me. <laughs> You're doing great. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Emily, would you like to introduce yourself also? Well, hey, um, I'm Emily Cruz. Um, I know everybody's time is so valuable. So I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to talk tonight. Um, we have a big, big family. Um, Mama's been a nurse. Uh, she went, went to nursing school when I was in third grade. So whenever it was time for me to make a career choice, it was just kind of automatic. So that's the path that I went. So we have a lot of ties in the cattle industry, um, in the medical community. Um, just mom up and them played softball. I was kind of raised in around the softball fields. Um, so we have you know, a lot of contacts there as well. Um, but I've been nursing for 13 years. I've done um, ER, SICU, hospice, um, med surge. So like mama was saying, it's super easy to drum up a conversation about, um, you know, well, you know, what, what problems kind of are you having or what prescriptions are you on? And let me tell you, most people are not shy about their prescriptions. They are ready to tell you every prescription they take and who prescribe it and how long they've been taking it. So that's always a super easy conversation. Um, and you will just, they'll tell you all the details. I love your guys's network. And I see how you have so many relationships in all of these different areas that you're connected in. So looks like you have strong rapport with those and people know that you care and they feel comfortable talking to you. I feel comfortable talking to you. I've never met you. So tell us a little bit about how long have you ladies been working your Plexus business and what is your current rank? Uh, my current rank is senior gold, which I just hit. Um, and I stalked Katie on Facebook for four months before, and she would send me messages. I would never respond. I'm just like those people we talk about. I never responded. And so after the fourth month, I said, you know what? Okay, I'm going to give it a try. So I called Katie and I said, hey, sign me up. What do I need to do? So she signed me up. And then, of course, they did the three-way call with Emily Hoss and Katie, and they were talking to me, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was walking around in the yard, they were talking, trying to get me 
about the opportunity. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. I don't want to sell. I don't want to do anything. I just want to do my own thing, see how it does before I ever try to get anybody else to do it. And so it went on. So I joined in September, actually Labor Day almost. And so I didn't make my first post till February. And I didn't tell any of my family too much that I was even doing it because I always do a little bit and then I quit. So anyway, this was easy for me to, to stay with it. And so I made my first post and I had it made, but I didn't actually mash the button for almost four days. And so when I did, my phone blew up because I posted pictures and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. So I told Katie, I said, I am overwhelmed. I had people calling me, talking to my husband. I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. So that's kind of how I started the business. Just kind of, I had no idea it was going to turn out like it did. So, and it's just kind of snowballed from there. So as somebody that said I would never do it, here I am. <laughs> I love it. So exciting. It's a great journey. Okay. So you said you started sharing in, or you made a February. post in February mm -hmm. and then July was just last month and you had high recruitment last month. We'll talk about that in a minute, but that's five months and you're still solidly recruiting. So everyone should be thinking a lot of questions right now, but I'll hand it over to Emily. So I started the products um, May the 2nd. Um, I had my um, third little girl on February the 1st. So on May the 2nd, I had finished my uh, breastfeeding journey. It kind of come to an end. So I told mama, I said, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with Lexus. So um, I had been on them 60 days when Emily Haas, Katie, um, mama and Dana Davis had a sip and see at mama's house. And so I went and they got me fired up. They were like, you have to share there. You, you just already have, you know, a network and I, we just know that you can do it. And so um, I said, okay, so that was June the 29th. And at the end of July 31st, I had ranked uh, to Fast Start Senior Gold. That is incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. So ladies. Tell us, you told us about your current clientele, like the people who are in your network, the people that you're talking to about Plexus. Um, are you meeting and new people online or is it mainly all in-person contacts so far? I would say most of mine have been online. And then when I go to weddings or out, you know, softball games, cow shows or whatever, I'll talk to those people in person. But most of the ones that I've, recruited I have known pretty much a long time a lot of my high school people that I've been out of school 43 years and I've had a lot of those folks on it and people I've played softball with past co-workers and it's just that network in Facebook that oh let me tell my mama about you and then the mama will call or the sister or the daughter. If, usually if you get a mother, the daughter's soon to follow. So I've kind of figured that out too. So, and their sisters and their aunts and their husbands. It's just crazy how everybody, yeah, I think they could benefit from it. So it's most of mine has been online and then just family and friends. Mm -hmm. Well, that shows that you have integrity, that people trust you to bring themselves to you, but then to also bring the masses. So that speaks volumes about your character and integrity, Rhonda. I love it. Okay, Emily, what are your thoughts on this? Um, mine have been kind of half and half, half online, half in person. Um, I work in a pretty large um, emergency room. And um, so mine have definitely been um, in person. So um, my current customers are my family, co-workers, um, family, friends. Um, my daughter shows, both of my daughters show cows through the 4-H and FFA. So um, with that, we also know some other people who show pigs. And so um, I reached out to them and um, they're like, oh my goodness, I need this for my husband. Um, 
and they they are thinking about it the wives are but i've got several husbands um that are i've signed up um so it's and it's funny because if you're talking about something i'll notice some other people kind of you know come by and they're like what are y'all what are y'all talking about and like they'll say oh my gosh you gotta talk to emily she you gotta hear about flexus so it's just like it's excitement Yes, and that was my next question was tell us about your posture as you are talking about plexus with all of these people. What does this look like? What do your conversations look like? Um, mine a lot will come up to me like at horse shows and say, so tell me about all this. I said, well, you look at the before and after pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Um, and I said, it's worked for me. I'm not going to try to talk you into anything I said um but I'm telling you this stuff is real and nobody is much more skeptical than I was when I started and I'm like oh this is not the real thing but anyway it proved to me it is and my family and I'm so excited when I talk to people and I'm like really you know this could really help you and they'll think well they'll think about it and like Katie said a lot of times Give them a few days, they'll send you a message. Hey, so tell me a little bit more about it. And so then I send them the video that Abby did. And then pretty much they're all like, uh, well, tell me a little bit more. So then I go into the conversation or I send them a little thing, telling them kind of like how the routine would be, uh, the flavors, kind of what their problems may be. And so that kind of guides me to which one they need to start with. And I also tell them, now you need to be committed and you need to do the 90 days. And I said, if you're not willing to commit the 90 days, maybe this isn't the right time for you to join. I said, because you, you're paying good money for this and you want to be successful and you have to be consistent and you have to be committed to do the 90 days. And I also tell them up front at that conversation, this is what the special is this month. This is what it's going to run you the first month and they're each month thereafter. And so once they have that and they look at it, then they send you a thing back, a message back and say, okay, sign me up. So then I know, okay, they're serious because they are, I've already told them everything and they're not waiting till the last minute. Oh my gosh, now it's $140. What are you talking about? So I try to be upfront. And because I have to live with these people around here and I don't want them to be ignoring me at the grocery store. So I always try to be upfront with everybody and let them know. So that's kind of how my posture is. I love it. Realistic expectations. You're not desperate for a sale. You're desperate for them to have a really strong experience. And I love that. That says a ton about you too, Rhonda. Okay, <laughs> Emily. Go ahead and share with us. I know we've been talking a lot lately about, you know, adding value. Look at, you know, go back and look at your Facebook page. Are, are you adding value to people in any, in any way? So I've been trying to do that intentionally. Um, and the people that I am Facebook friends with, um, and if I do happen to see them at work, um, you know, the other day I was like, hey, Eliza, oh my goodness, I saw that Ramsey is loving that sit me up and her little girl is two months older than mine. So we had a conversation about that. Um, and I was like, oh, I need to go by Walmart, you know, because it looked like it's just really going to help her sit up and everything. So that was a super easy way to then bring up Plexus, you know, um, as far as that's what I've been doing since, um, you know, she's six, my little girl, six months old and um, it's just that that's just an easy way to for me to relate with people. Um, and so um, if I don't, if I'm not familiar with the person, um, I've all, I'll, I always fall back is the weather. You know, it's been so, so hot today. Um, actually, in the ER, we had somebody that had a heat stroke. So it's been so hot and it's super easy for me to say, you know, a few months ago, I would be guzzling Diet Pepsis because that was my go-to. And now I found Plexus and thank goodness, all I want is water. And they're like, Plexus, what are you talking about? So that helps me then guide the conversation to, yeah, it really and truly, like, all I want to do is drink water. Like, I don't, I haven't bought Diet Pepsis in probably four months and I don't care to drink one. So that, 
again, you know, if you don't know someone, what you always want to steer clear of what they say, politics, religion. Well, everybody can talk about the weather. So let's talk about the weather. You ladies are smart people. So a, a theme that I'm seeing here is you're, you guys are great connectors. You, you value people. You take the time to slow down to connect and to just get a glimpse into their life and to let them be seen by you. Um, that you're naturally transitioning the conversation still about them. Uh, so this is speaking volumes. And so this is still your warm market. These are the majority of these people that you're still signing up are still in your warm market. Um, and so because of time, I'm going to bow out of our last question, but you ladies did fantastic. Thank you so much. And I think, I mean, anything that we can walk away from this is that just be genuinely you genuinely care about people and have that strong posture of, you know, knowing what these products can do for people. Um, and also setting them up with realistic expectations, which is everything that you ladies have done. So congratulations being at the top of the list for recruiters last month. Um, and so now we're going to pivot a little bit and we're going to focus more on cold market recruiting by our gorgeous Emily Haas. We got two Emily's on this call. Um, and so she's going to share a little bit with us because she recruited five last month and this was all cold market recruiting. So take it away, Emily. All right, well, I'm gonna share my screen. I have some slides. I figured that would help keep me on track and give y'all visuals because I work better with visuals. So let me share my screen. And we will go from here. All right, can y'all see this? Okay, perfect. So a little bit about me and why I'm talking to you about cold market recruiting. So um, I am an Emerald. I've been here for eight and a half years. So my warm market was tapped out a long time ago, a long time ago. Okay. And I had to learn how to talk to people that I did not know, which was way out of my wheelhouse, way out of my comfort zone. When I started, I had very minimal network, like I was a stay-at-home mama. I had been at home for, I don't know, five or six years at that point. And I stayed home. I talked to my children. I went to church, but I didn't really talk to many people there. I went and left. I was that kind of person. And so I just did not have a big network. Um, so I had to learn this skill because the little bit of people that I knew were not going to get me where I needed to go, right? Which is diamond. That's the goal. Um, and so I was just willing to learn. And if you're willing to learn, you can do this too. So at this point, probably 75% or more of the people I recruit are cold market. Um, I do have people come to me pretty regularly that I recruit. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you tonight about what that looks like. Um, and I'm going to try to do it quickly because I do want to respect everybody's time. Um, so here we go. Let's click through this. So top contributors to my success. And I'm going to go through these, break them down a little bit, but consistently posting on social media, consistently adding new friends, believing that I have a solution to people's problems, because when you believe that you have something that people need, it's much easier to get out of your comfort zone and talk to them. Um, getting over myself and my fears and keeping the focus on them. Again, when we're focused on other people, it makes getting out of our comfort zone easier. Not easy because it's not easy, but easier when we are focused on other people. Being willing to follow up and follow up and follow up and follow up some more, um, and then trust in the process. So these are the top things that I would say help me be consistent in recruiting every month. Um, and I just want to tell you, all I'm not a huge recruiter. So it kind of made me, I actually did laugh at Kayleen when she asked me to do this call. I was like, why? <laughs> because I do, I am confident in my recruiting abilities, but I'm not a mass recruiter. I recruit consistently, which is what we're after, um, but I don't recruit 
high numbers, you know, every month. Um, so just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so breaking down posting on social media, because this, I believe, is the foundation for cold market recruiting, um, because people have to see you, they have to know who you are, they're not, why would they want to join you, right? So posting on social media consists of consistency, do that consistently, whether that is daily, whether that's multiple times a day, whether it's four times a week, whatever your consistency is, be consistent in it. Um, and when I post, I try to keep the three E's in mind, encourage, equip, and entertain. If your post hit one of those things, you're on the right track. So do that. Um, I do post about the products and the opportunity because you're going to attract what you're posting about. So if you're only talking about products, you're going to have a lot of product users. If you're only talking about the opportunity, well, you're going to have a lot of business builders. I post about both because I want both um, because that is a good balanced business. But share what you value so people know what's important to you because we are drawn to people who like things that we like, right? That value things that we value. Um, and then speak directly to your audience. So what problem can you be solving for your audience? The person you are best suited to talk to and solve problems for is the person that you used to be. So think about things that you used to struggle with and talk through that. Show people how you used to struggle with this, but now you don't because they will find themselves in your story and they're going to want to know more. Okay, expanding your network. This is key. This is key because whether you have 110 Facebook friends or you have 2,500 Facebook friends, if you are talking to new contacts every day like we need to be doing at some point, those are going to run out. And so we have to be expanding our network and bringing new friends in so that we have new people to talk to. Basically, all of the world is on social media at this point. And so we have an unlimited network if we're willing to tap into it. So where do I find new friends? I'm always scrolling through that people you may know thing, you know, on Facebook. And I also look in the comments of my non-Plexus friends, and that can be just regular people or influencer type people, for lack of a better word, um, because I find these people interesting. And so probably the people in their comments find them interesting too. And so a lot of times I'll just look through the comments and if one of them jumps out and I'm like, oh, I like this girl. I like her. She kind of spicy. I let me go friend her. And so that is a lot of times where I do find new friends with. And I feel like we already connect, you know, because of that. Um, and then people I connect with in real life. And that a lot of times is people like at our homeschool co-op that I don't actually know. Um, I run the desk at our co-op. And so I see people coming through all the time and I see names, but I don't know all of them. So I will go do some Facebook stalking and I will bring them into my network. That's how I find new friends. But how do I decide who to friend? This is a little different. First and foremost is just their profile picture. And that may seem kind of shallow, but I'm telling you it's not because we associate. Well, we want to talk to people that we know what they look like, first of all. I'm telling y'all, if somebody has their dog or a sunset or a cup of coffee as their Facebook profile, I'm not friending them. I'm just not because I don't even know who they are. They may be, I don't know. I don't friend them. Your profile picture is very important is the bottom line here. Um, but that's how I initially kind of choose my person. But then I will go to their page and ask myself some questions. I just scroll through a little bit. Um, how does it make me feel? Do I feel happy and sunshiny or do I feel depressed all of a sudden? If it's depressed all of a sudden, I'm gone. I don't need that. Okay. Um, I do want people who are generally bringing good energy. What are they posting about? Is it things that I like and enjoy? Um, because that's probably going to be my person. If it's a mama and she's got littles in smocked outfits and they're at Georgia football games, you can bet she's my new friend. Um, find people who like what you like. 
Um, do I think they'd be fun to hang out with? Do we share similar interests? Do I see things that I think would make them be successful here? Are they posting about growth mindset or having their habits handled and stuff like that? So those are kind of the things that I look for when I'm working to expand my network, which should be also done consistently. I think you'll notice a theme here. Okay, so Kayleen asked me, how do I build rapport with these people? Because I don't know them from anybody, right? Um, and again, I really believe it starts with social media um, because that is our only connection at this point. That is how they get to know me and how I get to know them. And so posting authentically is very, very, very important. If I'm just doing a bunch of copy paste stuff that is not me. It does not sound like how I talk. If there's no emojis or exclamation points, that is not me. That is not authentic to me. And so the people that I'm bringing in, they're not really getting to know who I am. So be authentic in your posting. And then I talk a lot in my stories. Um, in all transparency, I go through phases with this where sometimes I feel like I don't have anything anybody would want to hear, but I do try to talk a lot in my stories and very often. And because of that, I have people tell me all the time, I just feel like I know you, you know, and it's because they've had conversation with me in my stories, right? Um, and people should recognize what you value. When you're posting well, they're going to recognize, oh, she values these things. Um, I'm always very aware of who's watching my stories and am intentional to engage with them, whether that looks like, um, you know, responding back and forth on my stories or whatever. Know who's watching your stories and engage with them because if they're watching your stories, especially repeatedly, they're curious about your life. They find you interesting. That is building rapport. Um, I always have this running list of people that I want to join me, and I'm intentional to engage with them. Now, again, transparency. This is not a perfect system. Sometimes this list is only in my brain. Sometimes it's on paper. Sometimes it's on both. Um, you don't have to have a perfect system. What you have to do is be willing to take action on your system, okay? This quote right here, is really the key. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by getting other people interested in you. Go find your people that you want to join you and engage with them. Comment on their posts, watch their stories, respond to their stories. Get Just show them, oh, you just went to on vacation to Disney World, I love that. I want to know more about that. You know, be interested in what they're doing and what their life is. And that is the best and quickest way to build a friend, like make a friend with somebody. All right, I'm just going to show you all these couple of sample posts. I'm not going to read them. You can watch the recording, whatever. Um, you can scroll through my Facebook posts. They're there. I pulled them from there a couple, you know, a little couple hours ago. Um, but Products, talk about the products, show you with the products, show yourself with the products. That is very important. Share stories, other people's stories, but use you, your face. This is not my face. Most of my posts are my face, but show you using the products. Okay, that's very important. And I don't know what else I was going to say about that, but we're going to move on. Products. Okay, opportunity. Show people who you used to be, what you used to want, what you used to pray for. Show them how this opportunity is meeting those needs for you. Because somebody out there read this post and went, all I ever wanted to do was be a mama too. And they have connected with this post. And now I'm showing them that I'm still a mama. I'm, I'm living the dream, but I'm also taking my family on vacation and not putting it on a credit card. We're also doing this and this because of it. So share your story in a way that other people see themselves in it. Okay, personal posts. I put three here because personal posts is a wide variety. This one with my picture here is showing that every day I don't wake up feeling sunshine and rainbows, although that is generally my how I feel. 
no, it's not all the time, but even when I don't, I can take it and flip that script and work through it. That's going to resonate with people because not everybody wakes up sunshines and rainbows all the time, right? Um, this one in the middle, sometimes it's just good to make people laugh. Everybody that read that post, their brain went to the last time they were at a pool and they saw 15 people trying to get on an inner tube in the lazy river and they were laughing and laughter is medicine and we need to make people laugh. So that is a great way to engage your audience and it gets a lot of comments. So then this other one, a lot of people want to know, is it okay if I take my kids to this movie? What's in the movie? You know, like whatever. We went and saw The Little Mermaid. I just simply showed people, hey, we went and did a fun Friday night thing and here's my movie review, right? I talk about Plexus all the time and give Plexus reviews. Why would I not give movie reviews to parents out there wondering, is it okay for my kids to go see The Little Mermaid? And then if you'll notice at the bottom, it says full movie review of my stories. So I didn't just give them I gave them a nugget in my post and then I sent them to my stories where they are really getting to know me and gave them my real behind the scenes review, which just went deeper. And I followed that up with a plexus story. You see how this is all kind of layering? Okay. Sample initial contact message, because I know everybody wants to know, what do you say to these people after you've done this? And like I said, I don't have a perfect system. I don't connect with, you know, every person five times before I send a message or have these deep, meaningful, you know, conversations about anything um, before I reach out to them. We have basic rapport, which means I'm commenting on their post about their kids starting school, about their vacations. I'm watching their stories. And between that and the value that I feel that I'm adding to them on social media, I have no problem going into their inbox with this message. And I use a direct approach. The first time I'm in their inbox, I'm talking plexus. Um, other people will go a different way. That is how I prefer it. But this is a sample message. Um, and then from that, I just follow Christina's follow-up system that she shared last week. It's in our guides and freedom team. Um, but that's what I do. The recruiting process is the same. It just starts with building that rapport, that like, no trust factor with people that you don't know before you show up in their inbox. Um, so that's kind of, you know, what that looks like. And then just reminders, your cold market is just full of people that you are not friends with yet, but they're waiting to be your friends. So there's that. Um, people don't know what you have if you don't show them, if you don't tell them. We have a solution to the top two stressors, health and finances. Talk less, earn more, and ask good questions. Keep that always at the forefront of your mind. Um, and I've learned to do that more and more so with cold market because I do need to have more of a connection with them. And that connection comes through questions and being curious about them. Um, and then last thing, trust the process. Just trust the process. It is not speedy. Most people don't jump in on the first message, you know, unless it's that person that has been watching you and watching you and watching you and they show up in your inbox and say, hey, how much is it for Plexus? I need to do this. And then you're like, oh, okay, this is fun. Um, but that that is what I have. That is my process. That is, that's what it looks like. So there you have it. Well, thank you, ladies. This was super insightful. I feel like Emily, I kind of got a little tunnel vision into your into your world. But I think you are really smart with your posts and then connecting to the stories, like get hear more, like get more in my stories to draw people there. That is so smart. And then to follow it with a plexus story is also very, very strategically brilliant. Well, thank you ladies for sharing the warm market, the cold market. Guys, we have so many people to reach with Plexus and we can come up with a lot of excuses and reasons why to not reach out to people, but we really need to focus on why 
we do need to reach out to these people. People are praying for solutions and we have that and we have that hope here. So um, let's end this call and then we will do some Q&A.